Hello fellow AFAers, my name is Andres Gonzalez and I'm a teaching artist with AFA and I've been uh, teaching violin uh, for the last uh, almost 10 years at this point where I've led chamber music and uh, violin coachings for the first violin sections of the orchestra. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to get ready for chamber music. And the very first thing that you want to do is to make sure that you have one of these guys. You need a score. What do you want to score for? Well, there's a whole lot of information in here. Uh, first thing you want to do is to check to see if your score has bar numbers. If it has bar numbers, great. If it doesn't, make sure you put in those bar numbers prior to the very first rehearsal you hold with your friends. In addition, should you not have bar numbers in your part, make sure you put those in there as well, okay? Which brings me to my next point. Study the score and take a look to see if you can identify the form of your piece. Is this piece in binary form, A, B? Is it a rondo, A, B, A, C, A, D, A? Is it just a dance, like a gigue, a minuet, a rondo, a bourre? Or more, most commonly, is it in sonata form? Sonata form is the most used stencil of music composers use and they have it at their disposal, and you should probably take advantage of that. It's got three different components. It's got the exposition, it's got the development, and it's got the recapitulation, or as we call it, it's just a recap. And you want to be able to identify each one of those sections. I challenge each one of you to go and look for the characteristics and definitions for each of these portions, so you can have a deeper and greater understanding of how your piece of music goes, okay? My third point. Take a look at each other. I cannot tell you how many times I've been in a classroom and coached a chamber music group where there has been little to no interaction between the musicians. Listen, it's not that it makes it more fun, although it does make it more fun for us to watch, but you can't have a conversation and not look at each other. It's just not a thing. And if I were to, you know, give this lecture and be like this and just be reading this the whole time, would you actually be interested? You don't have to answer that. Um, but you get the point. You need to be able to know what's going on around you. Know what happens with the viola part. Know what's, what's happening with the second violin part. If you don't have an understanding of what that is and you don't communicate with your friends, what's the point of getting together? Do music on your own, which is not quite as fun, actually. Finally, make sure you understand everybody's parts. Everybody has a critical role to play in the piece of music that you are preparing. If you're playing a quartet, logic stands that there are four of you. So all four of you have something really important to say. Now, being that I'm a violinist, I might think that the world revolves around me. And I think that sometimes, but let me tell you, that's absolutely not true. I have to be aware of what's going on in the cello section. What is this person doing? How are they driving the rhythmic and harmonic line? How am I fitting in with the viola and a second violin part? Their inner voices and they're, they're feeding me off of what's going on in the cello part. It's just, it's, it's all integral. It has to be there, okay? So I am always aware of what's going on in the other parts. I don't think that you need to necessarily be able to play the other parts, but you should definitely be aware of what they're doing at all times, okay? Finally, I just want you to have fun. You need to enjoy making music with your friends. That's the whole point of getting together, all right? So enjoy your time, have a great fall, and most of all, have a good, good experience making chamber music together.